So today's email comes from Jeremy and his email reads, I'm worried about the influence that my mom is having on my younger brother. She claims to hear voices, the voice of God, and talks about having visions. I love my mom, but this is crazy to me. I'm a Christian and she calls herself a Christian, but I know this isn't right. She claims that God speaks to her and uses visions to tell her what's going to happen. How do I process or deal with this because it's becoming a problem in my family? Thanks, brother. So thank you for your email, Jeremy. And I understand your frustration. I've also had to deal with this in my family as well. So the first thing I want to make clear right out the gate is this, that the canon is closed. It's complete. It's perfect. And it's everything the Lord wants you to know. Okay, There is nothing else you need to know outside of the word of God. And false teachers and heretics have used and abused Joel 2.28. You, know, you literally have whole false churches built upon Joel 2.28. So what is Joel 2.28? And Peter also requotes this in verse uh, in Acts verses 2.17. But the verse says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Okay. Now, in my opinion, the biggest problem I see today in regards to false teaching and interpretation is people taking verses at face value. Okay, Most people don't take the time to understand the verse in its context or dispensation. Okay, They'll, they'll go on Google, they'll find a verse, and they just run with it, right? Now, in regards to Joel 2.28, the first thing we need to understand about this verse is that right before it, we read about the Lord's warning that a swarm of locusts will bring forth destruction to Judah if they do not repent. But if they do repent, the Lord declares that he would put away his destruction and give them signs. Now, the reason that I believe that these signs and wonders were specifically for the apostolic age is, is because that's where we see them. Okay, so let's go to the book of Acts. So, we have Philip the evangelist. His daughters are prophets. That's Acts 21. In Acts 16, Paul has a vision of a man who invites him to Macedonia. In Acts 11, a man named Agabus prophesies of a famine and has a message for Paul or Peter. I'm sorry, Peter. And then there's a few more, but here's the question. Okay, here's the question that we need to focus on. Were these visions and signs specifically for the early church age, or are they meant to continue through the end times? Well, let's examine, you know, the people that we see today, the teachers that we see today and we respect. We have the Paul Watchers, we have the Tim Conways, the Vodies, the John MacArthur's, R.C. Sproul, John Piper, and so on. Do we see these men talking about visions and dreams and things like that today? Is that what we see in their sermons? No, we don't. But who do we see doing it today? We see false teachers doing it. Okay, I remember a story that Tim Conway told about the early years of uh, Grace Church in San Antonio, Texas. He talked about a there was this woman. It was a it was a four week period in which a woman was visiting the church, and there was something off about this woman. It was very dark, you know, just it's just something off about her. And she had been telling certain people in the church that she had heard voices and God spoke to her directly, and she was hearing things. And Tim talked about on the last Sunday that she was at their church that after the service. He walked up to her and he said, do you hear voices? He just asked her flat out, do you hear voices? And the woman said, yes. And she began to go into what the voices were telling her. And Tim looks at her and says, that's not God. And the woman got real upset. She turned around, left the church, and she never came back. But we also need to understand that there is a demonic aspect to this as well. Look, bottom line, the word of God must be enough. Okay, it is enough. And because of that, we should not take anyone serious that is not coming to you from the word of God. And honestly speaking, I would actually take offense to anyone that tried to tell me about some dream they had or some vision or some prophecy that wasn't in the word of God. OK, it doesn't edify. It doesn't reveal anything that hasn't already been revealed. The only thing it does is it exalts the person telling the story. It's a very selfish act. Very selfish. Um, how is that helping me? And as Christians, what we do, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for the person we're speaking to, okay? We're not seeking to exalt ourselves. We're not seeking to make ourselves look like we're super spiritual. We have some gift that no one else has, okay? This isn't about us. What we do is not about us, okay? Um, we do it because we love others. We love sinners. And so just be very careful with people like this, okay? Be very careful. Um, I was wondering uh, what your personal interpretation of First Corinthians 14 was, and if you believe that speaking in tongues is still used today. Now, come on, give me a hard question. <laughs> now, there are going to be godly men who disagree with me, um, especially on the nuances of these things. When I read 
the old, old writers. They had a lot more freedom to talk about the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and gifts because they were not confronted in their day with the thing, with the extreme charismatic movement that we have. Okay, now Baptists are reactionary when they see heresy, they react against it, but sometimes they fall into heresy on the other side. You know, there's someone who will look at the charismatic movement, people like the, you know, arch heretic, Benny Hinn and other people like that. And they'll realize all that is false, but then they'll go so far the other way that um, that they no longer even believe in the Holy Spirit. Or if they do, it's just a doctrinal issue. There's no sense of experience. There are people who are just their whole life is experience, false experiences, and they have no grounding in the word. And so, you know, some Christians look at that and they go over here and they get in the word and they have no experience. Um, the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. We should be constantly praying for greater and greater manifestations of the spirit, outpourings of the spirit. Our lives should be supernatural. Now, when it comes to tongues, the big issue that everybody says is, are they for today or are they not? And uh, everybody says that's the question. And some say, yes, they are. And others say, no, they're not. Um, I don't think that's the question. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is this. For example, theologically, I will not say, even though men godlier than I would disagree with me, theologically or doctrinally, I do not say that tongues have ceased. All right. So everybody thinks, oh, man, he believes in tongues. No, hold it. I just don't think that's the issue. When I go to the text, I cannot. You know, I see the arguments and stuff, but I can't say that I can say in my conscience that these things have ceased. But here's what I do do. Um, I look at what tongues are in the scriptures and I don't see them anywhere today. What I see in the scriptures as being tongues, and I compare that to, to people who say they speak in tongues, I see something completely different. So see, I, I, some people are cessationist. That means they believe tongues have ceased. I kind of call myself a practical cessationist in the sense that I do not say those things have ceased. I've seen God heal people. You know, but have I seen a man who had the gift of healing? No. Have I, have I, here's what I think. I, I believe tongues in the book of Acts. Every time it occurs, it is a, it is a real phonetic language. It is. It's a real phonetic language. And, uh, those are the only examples of tongues we have. And they're real phonetic languages. And when they occurred, everybody knew something supernatural was going on. I mean, if I just sit here and repeat over and over, I think she wrote a Honda. I think she wrote a Honda. <laughs> There's nothing supernatural about that. But if a man walks in from Uzbekistan and I begin to talk to him the gospel in his dialect, everybody's going to know something's going on. All right. I believe that they were always and, and I don't see that today. Now, I've heard on the fringe of missions where the gospel was entering in, even in modern times, godly Baptist and Presbyterian missionaries will tell you that strange things occurred. But so that's the way I look at it. All you have to do now, if you say Tongues and all that have ceased, you know, and you, you've got your theological reasons, your doctrinal reasons for that. You know, I know godly men, men that that have mentored me that I love who believe that. But in my conscience, where I am looking at scripture, I don't say that. But I do say this. Define the gifts and you'll see that 
these supernatural manifestations and you will find that 95% at least of the people who say they've done them and have them, it's a total contradiction to what the Bible says. So stay, just compare it to the word. Now, some people will look at 1 Corinthians and say, but there's a tongue of angels, you know, 1 Corinthians 13. That's not what he's saying. He could be using hyperbole there. I mean, you know, if, if I said, if I was as big as a house, I wouldn't fight you. It doesn't mean I'm as big as a house. And Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of angels, but have not love, that doesn't mean that there are men who speak in the tongues of angels. And the fact that they say in 1 Corinthians 14, well, you know, it's an unknown tongue there. No one understands him. And in the book of Acts, when they spoke, everyone understood them. But in 1 Corinthians, they speak and no one understands. So it's a different kind of tongue. No, no one understands because no one spoke the language there that he was speaking and there was no interpreter to interpret it. You see? And so... Uh, I guess that's what I think in a nutshell. Okay.